you have speech and you have noise, and you want to mix them to create speech and noise. Let's do it using Prot. First, there are some decisions to make. What noise do you want? What signal to noise ratio do you want? And are you getting that signal to noise ratio by changing the speech or changing the noise or changing both? What's being adjusted? Let's start with the noise itself. Some common noises are speech shaped noise, speech modulated noise, and multi talker babble. Speech shaped noise is when you have speech and you obtain the spectrum and you make a noise whose spectrum matches that of the speech. Usually you don't get the spectrum from just one utterance. You actually combine your whole set of stimuli, string it together, and get the long term average. That way it's a fair representation of the whole stimulus set. To make speech modulated noise, what you do is extract the amplitude envelope of the speech and then impose it on your speech shaped noise. Then the output is noise, but it maintains the modulations of speech. There's a whole other video on speech shaped noise elsewhere in this channel, linked in the description below. There's also multi talker babble, where you have sentences spoken by many talkers and you add them all together into a mixture. And usually you can't understand any of the speech, but you know that it's people talking. You may have also heard of white noise, but that's not really a commonly used noise in auditory experiments, so we won't talk about it here. Now we choose the signal to noise ratio, which is the intensity of the speech in decibels minus the intensity of the noise in decibels. And it's a ratio because intensity is on a logarithmic scale. We don't know the difficulty of the task just based on the SNR though. The difficulty depends on what the speech is and what the noise is. If the speech is something super easy like digits or some other kind of closed set test, then you can get good performance at a low SNR, whereas if you're listening to random sentences that same SNR might make it impossible. Also the noise itself can have an impact, as it's easier to hear the speech when the noise is modulated, when it's harmonic, and when it doesn't start at the exact same time or in the same physical location as the speech. Now we think about what is being adjusted. Suppose you want a signal to noise ratio of plus six. You have speech and you have noise and you want the speech to be six dB higher than the noise. But the question is, do you want to raise the speech by six dB or do you want to lower the noise by six dB? Or you could modify each by half. Either way, you get a plus 6 dB SNR. One of these choices might make more sense for you in the specific study that you're doing. Just make sure to think it through and make an intentional decision that makes sense for your design. So, with all that being said, let's talk about how you can use a prot script to mix your speech with noise. This script has a lot of features. You can adjust the SNR by modifying the speech or the noise, as we just went over. And you can also set a specific duration of noise that leads and trails the speech to make sure it doesn't start at the exact same time. Now, suppose you have a stimulus and you want the noise to buffer it by some amount of time, but your noise isn't long enough to cover that whole stretch of time. The script will replicate your noise so that it's sufficiently long enough to cover the time you need. And it will randomize the starting point of the noise so that it's not the same exact noise for each stimulus. And that process, called circle shifting, looks like this. Speaking of leading and trailing time, there's another important feature of this script. Suppose your sound has an intensity of 60 dB, but then you make a version that has some extra silence padded on the start and the end. Well now, according to Pratt, the intensity will be lower, because it's averaging the speech with the silence. So what the script does is remove any leading or trailing silence before estimating the intensity of the speech. Okay, suppose you want speech shaped noise, but you didn't have the good sense to watch the other video on this channel. Don't worry, there's an automatic speech shaped noise generator built right into the script. All you need to do is have some speech up in your objects list, and then you can use those sounds to create your own speech shaped noise right on the fly. You can even modulate it by the speech envelope. Finally, while you can run this procedure on objects currently in your list, 
you have the option of running an entire folder of sounds, and the script lets you save all the sounds you create, along with some documentation and the noise you used in the mix. Now let's see what it looks like to run the script. Here we are on the Listen Lab GitHub page, where we can see some prot scripts. The Mix Speech and Noise script is right here. I click on it. I'm going to click on the raw version, which makes it very easy for me to select all the text on the screen, copy it, and then paste it into a new prot script. Now I'll press Run. And now I have this big pop-up window that I'm going to walk you through step by step. Right up at the top, we can type in the signal to noise ratio we want. This section here lets us determine how we arrive at that SNR, for example, by changing the noise or by changing the speech. This section is where we tell Prot how to name the new sound after it has the noise mixed in. The default option is to keep the sound name and indicate the SNR with the letters SNR and then the number. So for example, if you have a sound called sentence 1x30, the new sound in the noise will be called sentence 1x30 SNR0, because 0 is the SNR at the top of the script. Here the script is kind of reading itself. You could alternatively type your own addition to the file name using this little text field here. So your sound would end in underscore noise because that's what's in the little text box. You could also choose to leave the name unchanged, which might work for you if you're saving the sound in a new folder. The next part asks which sounds you want to mix with noise. There are two options. You either run sounds that are already in your list, or you read in all the WAV files in a folder that you type here. One little trick you can do if you're not sure how to type your file path is just to type choose folder in that box, and then you'll get to navigate to your folder by hand. Now suppose you actually want to run the script and save the files. You click this box and you need to tell it the name of the new folder where you want to save the sounds. So the current folder that already exists is here, and because we've typed with noise, there'll be a new subfolder with that name where all the new sounds will be. Now let's see the script in action. All right, we've got our script here in the script window, and I've got some sounds already in the list. So when I run the script, I'm going to indicate that I will, in fact, run it on the objects in that list. I'm going to have an SNR of zero. I'm going to keep the speech at the same level that it's at, and I'm going to change the level of the noise to suit my SNR. In this case, I'll make the noise the same exact intensity as the speech. I'm going to have, let's say, half a second before and half a second after the speech where the noise will continue on. And I'm going to randomize the starting phase of the noise. I'm going to keep the default for the naming scheme, and let's see what it can do here. So it asks me to select which sounds I want to mix with noise. I'm going to select all of them. And now it asks me which noise to mix in. Now I don't have any noise in the window here, so I can tell it to create speech-shaped noise right now. And it needs an input for that. So all the sounds that I, I have here are the ones that I want to average together to create that speech-shaped noise. And now it's done. So it created the noise here, which we can hear. It also blended that noise with the speech, as we can see with about a half second before and a half second after the speech ends, and we can listen to the output. Boy has black hair. Now let's run the script again. This time I'll keep everything at the default. Maybe I'll make the SNR a little bit easier like a plus three. Uh, I'm going to select the same sounds as before. And this time I'm going to create speech modulated noise. And I'll do the same thing I did before. I'm going to select all the input sounds. And now the output we can see in the background has noise that's modulated. The boy has black hair. So the background noise is this. which has the same long-term spectrum of the speech, but as you can see, has the modulations of the sentences that I put into it. Now suppose I get rid of everything in the list, uh, all the new sounds, 
Now as I run it, again with all those defaults, I'll put all these sounds and noise. This time I have a noise in the list that I can select. So I'll say I'll pick a noise from the list. And I'm going to pick that modulated noise. I like that. And now it's done. So I don't have to create a noise on the fly. I can just choose one that's already there in the list, and it gives me a good output. Potatoes grow in the ground. Now you don't have to use this sort of noise. Now you can use any noise you want. I can in fact create a new sound, like a shepherd tone. I'll make it long enough so that it'll cover all the speech I have. And as it creates that, I can think about what it would sound like to have speech with that shepherd tone in the background. It's kind of a weird sound that just sounds like it's continuously uh, changing upwards. But you know, you can be as creative as you want. So I'm going to run the script, select all these sounds to be mixed with noise. I'm going to pick a noise from the object list. And the background that I want, the noise, is the shepherd tone. And Prod is happy to add that to the background of my sentences. The boy has black hair. So you, you can really add any kind of noise you want, including, you know, multi-talker babble, um, music, anything you need. Okay, the next thing I want to do is actually run the script on sounds that are already in a folder on my computer. So I'm going to run the script, and what I'm going to do is copy the file path from here right into the script window here. I'll paste it in, and now I have to tell it to run sounds in that folder. I'm also going to tell it to save files, save the output by checking that box. You'll also notice that this other box is checked called Clean Up Loaded Objects at Runtime. This is important if you have a folder full of hundreds of sounds that might otherwise clog up the objects window and slow down prod. In this case, I'm not really worried about it because I only have nine sounds, but just a, it's a good practice to keep that clicked. Um, I would unclick it if I wanted to see the sound output as soon as I'm done, um, but then again, that might slow down the program. Okay, I'm going to change this to have an SNR of plus six, and so the subfolder name I'm going to say is SNR six. I'm going to load it. What noise do I want? Uh, I'm going to create a modulated noise. I like that. And I'm going to use these sounds from the list to make that noise. Now, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have any sounds in the list. So if you're going to run a folder, you might want to have uh, the noise already loaded in your list. Now, it looks like it's hanging up here and not really doing much, but you can see in the background it has created that folder. Uh, we have all of our sounds with the noise in them. Um, you can also see a little folder where the noise itself uh, has been saved as well as a little text file with some documentation. So if we open that file, we can see it processed nine files in that folder. It used a 6 dB SNR, and it mixed them by maintaining the speech and changing the noise, uh, and it used this speech-shaped modulated noise. So there's not a whole lot of documentation, but just enough to remember exactly what you did. Best of luck as you create sounds for your speech and noise experiment. I'm sure there are some interesting things that you'll learn along the way. Before I go, there's one super important thing about this method that I need to share that can make a big difference, and it's all about the 90 to an arm, colored, 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 colored.